Today on Eagle Nation News, one elementary student in Prosper ISD was granted his wish. Christina Krasnova meets with a fourth grader to hear his story. This week is Hope Week. Allison Wood meets with the teacher of Hope Squad to hear his mission for the program. The girls' soccer team is off to a dominating start. Alyssa Ventura looks into the how the team plans to make it all the way to state. Good morning, Eagle Nation, and thank you for joining us. Today is Friday, February 10th. I'm Landry Long. And I'm Parker Reynolds. Welcome back from our snow break. I wouldn't say snow break. It was more of an ice break for me. <laughs> well, whatever break it was, Landry, it was much needed. I agree, but the ice and snow, however, did not stop the Dallas Zoo from continuing to making headlines. The Dallas Zoo missing monkey thief has finally been caught, and the court documents reveal that he was planning on doing much more. Fox 4 reported that 24-year-old Davon Irving stole two emperor and tamarind monkeys from their habitat and took them to an abandoned house in Lancaster. After being arrested this past week, police say that he admitted that he was also the person who let up the clouded leopard of its enclosure last month. His explanation for all of this monkey business is that he just loves animals and that he was planning on continuing to steal them. He has been charged with multiple accounts of animal cruelty for these and two felonies for theft. Now, Parker, growing up, I was always a fan of going to the Dallas Zoo, but I know with all these headlines, some people, including myself, have been a little skeptical of going. Yeah, understandably, Landry, but I'm glad they finally caught who was responsible for all of these crimes because I'm also a fan of the Dallas Zoo, but you know what? I'm a bigger fan of the Dallas Mavs. And if you haven't already heard, a big new name in basketball has finally arrived in Dallas. Kyrie Irving is officially a Mav, and without even a full practice, already getting a big win against the Clippers on Wednesday. And without Luka Doncic, who is still out over an injury and in what the Dallas Morning News is calling a yin and yang, ice and fire relationship between the two, which hope to debut in Dallas's new dynamic duo either tonight or this weekend. You can watch the game tonight at 9 on Bali Sports Southwest. Parker, I am really looking forward to seeing both Luka and Kyrie out on the court, hopefully tonight. It's truly like a dream to have them both. Yeah, Landry, and also making dreams come true. This Tuesday, the Prosper community gathered together to celebrate and send off one special student. Christina Krasnova sat down with Tommy and his family to take us through this special season of their lives. This is Tommy. He spends his days playing sports and spending time with his friends and family. But in April of 2019, he noticed something that would change his life from then on. There was just like a big bump on my back. We went to go to the hospital to check it, and they said, and then they told us to come back to see the results, and they showed us that, we, that I have cancer. At that point, I didn't know that cancer was bad. I thought I would just be hairless. <laughs> um, but then I realized, like, in the middle of it, that I could um, not be here now. Tommy's diagnosis of a wing sarcoma was so rare that only 2% of children with cancer have it. This heartbreaking news immediately affected everyone close to Tommy. I don't think there's like words to really describe like how awful and like emotional it is. And like, you know, nothing else matters. Like when that happens, like nothing else matters. You go from having the perfect life where you take life for granted and then uh, it's kind of ripped away. So you're always wondering if something happens. Uh, you get a fever, you get something else. You're always checking, you're always thinking about what's next. Someone always asks you, you know, how do you be strong? But when it's the only choice, it's very easy to be strong. After 14 rounds of chemotherapy and a lifetime worth of being Tommy Strong, on January 11th of 2021, Tommy rang the Children's Health Hospital's cancer bell, finally declaring that he had beaten cancer. That was probably like my favorite day, cause like I'm cancer free that day. After two years of being cancer-free, receiving nationwide love and support, and even receiving enough signed baseball hats to make his own hat wall, Tommy received one surprise that might have topped it all. We all 
like we're big sports fans of like every sport. <laughs> so that was exciting to, to find out that we were gonna get to go to the Super Bowl. The Make-A-Wish Foundation, they helped um, get this for him. There was a lot of people or like children who wanted to go to the Super Bowl. And my brother was like one of the, the very few, of the seven. This past Tuesday, the day before he left, the Prosper community rallied for one final surprise for Tommy. The Prosper High School band, cheerleaders, and football team gathered at his elementary school and his peers lined the hallways to send him off to Super Bowl 57. Tommy was even escorted out by Chief Blassengame on a fire truck. For Eagle Nation News, We love you, Tommy! I'm Christina Krasnova. Tommy and his family are in Glendale, Arizona right now to attend the 57th Super Bowl. Parker, I had the privilege to sit down with Tommy and his family and just to hear firsthand all that they went through and his journey. The one thing that really stuck with me was the importance of giving blood. Tommy said that he had over 20 people during his time in treatment give him blood and it was crucial for the success of his treatment. Yeah, I agree and I didn't realize the significance of giving blood mm -hmm. and anything that we can do to help others we should definitely be doing. And his whole family totally deserves getting that trip to the, not just the Super Bowl but also to Rihanna's performance. They really do. While we're on the subject of performances, the Grammys were filled with them. With over the top entertainment and of course drama, stay tuned to hear all of the controversial speeches and awards. Stop by Prosper Blooms for all your floral needs. Located on West Broadway in downtown Prosper, the locally owned flower shop is home to arrangements for every occasion. Prosper Blooms also offers earrings, headbands, Prosper gear, and more. Come by and make your own arrangement at the Blooms Bar or order a designed arrangement. Prosper Blooms offers same day design and hand delivery to cater to all your plant needs. Prosper Blooms, the one-stop shop for everything floral and... The Grammys have taken their rightful place at the top of the entertainment headlines, with talk show ends and musical beginnings following close behind. Madeline Wentz is in studio with all of the pop culture news you need to know in this week's edition of Talent Talk. Madeline, thanks Landry. The 65th Grammy Awards took place on Sunday. Beyonce's album Renaissance carried her to nine nominations and four wins, making her the most Grammy awarded artist in history, with 32 wins total. Despite this, Beyonce was snubbed in some major categories. She was beat by Harry Styles for Harry's House for Album of the Year, a result I had not expected, nor am I too pleased about. Harry's House was catchy last summer, but it became overplayed, and it lacks lyrical depth. I'm not the only one with this opinion, it would seem. A fan at the Grammys could be heard booing and yelling, Beyonce should have won, as Styles accepted his award. Record of the Year went to Lizzo for her song About Damn Time. In her acceptance speech, Lizzo thanked legendary artists Prince and Beyonce for inspiring her, admitting to skipping school for a Bay concert in fifth grade. And honestly, who could blame her? Other Grammy winners include Kendrick Lamar for Best Rap Performance, Song, and Album, Taylor Swift's All Too Well Short Film for Best Music Video, and jazz singer Samara Joy for Best New Artist. The Late Late Show, another program airing on CBS, is coming to an end after 28 years. Set to replace it, a reboot of At Midnight, a comedic panel-style game show. At Midnight with Chris Hardwick originally aired on Comedy Central between 2013 and 2017. The Late Late Show has been hosted by James Corden since 2015 and will be canceled after he departs sometime this year to pursue other projects, he says. I just hope those projects aren't more mu movie musicals. Speaking of, Oscar-winning movie musical La La Land is finally getting a Broadway adaptation. I am ecstatic about this news. I absolutely love the emotion, choreography, and music in La La Land, and I am excited to see that brought to life on stage. As of right now, there has been no announcement as of who's in the cast or when La La Land will open on Broadway, but you best believe I will be buying tickets. And that's all for Pop Culture News this week. Back to you, Landry and Parker. Thanks, Madeline. I will say that I was hoping that All Too Well by Taylor Swift would secure Best Song, but I am glad that the short film was recognized. Yes, we know, Landry. You are always rooting for Taylor. Um, but speaking of hoping, even though last week's snowstorm stopped school from happening, it wasn't able to stop Hope Week. Allison Wood shines a light on how one coach brings hope to the student body. Students walk through dozens of doors daily, but for room 1237, they don't just open the doors to a classroom, but an environment for compassion and understanding. 
The peer-to-peer -peer suicide prevention program, Hope Squad, encourages a positive environment among staff and students. The class is led by the student's friend, mentor, and role model, Tony Cooper. We have a really good bond, and I feel like that type of bond with a teacher and student is just something that you should take, and it's, you should treasure it because it's something that you don't get every day. He's one of the people that, like, he can also be your friend, but then also be your teacher and teach you so many great things that you can take on and move on with your life. Once the idea of the Hope Squad class was brought up to Cooper, he knew this was what he was called to do. Going through some of the different difficulties I've faced in life, working odd jobs, parents being hard on me, that helps me put myself in kid's situation. Like when a kid comes into class, and they don't always do what you want them to do. Well, what's the bigger problem behind that? It's not like the kids just being defiant. Connecting with his students has left a lasting impact with kids now and in the past. I try to make an impact in class with kids at relationships anyways. Here's an opportunity to have a vehicle to do more. I've got a girl now that's serving in the Air Force, and she is trying to start a Hope Squad program in the Air Force. It's really starting to make an impact. It was really cool around the nation. Students walk away from the Hope Squad class with valuable life tools and an even better mentor relationship. Reporting for Eagle Nation News, I'm Allison Wood. It's been so great to see everyone in their PJs today for the last day of Hope Week. Yes, I'm so thankful for our Hope Squad class putting in the extra work and time to make sure Hope Week happened. And it's also good to see Prosper Sports continuing to dominate this spring. The Prosper Swim and Dive team have multiple athletes that qualified for state. Game time is next. The application for the PHS National Honor Society is now open. All information needed can be found on the Prosper High School National Honor Society page. The application closes on February 24th. Please contact Ms. Rutledge with any questions. The wrestling team is currently taking part in the Region 2 6A Championship. Grace Escabel is in the studio with this week's Game Time. Thanks, Parker. The swim and dive team is heading to state. Earlier this week, the Region 2 6A Championship meet took place. Senior diver Shaylin Heyman is advancing to state in the one meter dive. Freshman Georgia Wimberly also qualified for state in the 200 free and the Eagles 200 medley relay along with freshman Braden Jones who placed second in the 100 backstroke. Junior Jacob Wimberly took home athlete of the meet. First place in the 100 butterfly and set a new school record in the event and first place in the 50 freestyle. The UIL 6A state championship meet will take place next weekend. In basketball news, the boys' basketball team is fourth in district after an upset win over the formerly undefeated Allen 59-55 last Friday. The Eagles weren't, however, able to pull out a win against Braswell 49-37 and fell short to McKinney 59-51. The Eagles will face off against Denton Geyer tonight at Denton Geyer at 7. Sticking with basketball, last Friday the Lady Eagles also faced off with Allen, but were able to close the night out with a win, falling short 65-29. The Lady Eagles also fell short to Braswell, 53-27, and McKenney on Tuesday, 52-36. Moving from the court to the mat, the wrestling team took part in the District 6 6A Championship meet and finished with three individual district champs. For the girls' team, all 10 wrestlers finished in the top four and qualified for regionals. The boys team took home fourth as a team, and seven out of the 12 wrestlers placed in the top four and are competing in the regional meet right now at Allen High School. The meet will continue throughout the weekend. Also taking place this weekend, the tennis team will take part in the McKinney Tournament at McKinney High today and tomorrow at 8. The boys powerlifting team will also compete this weekend in the SNS Invite at SNS Consolidated tomorrow at 9. Switching to soccer, the Lady Eagles are still undefeated in district play. Last Friday, the Lady Eagles brought home a big 9-0 win over Denton Braswell. The winning streak continued in a shootout with McKinney Boyd 6-5. Lady Eagles had another shootout with the Allen Eagles winning 4-2. The Lady Eagles will play again tonight at McKenney High School against the Lions at 7.30. Continuing with soccer, the Eagles are second in district with a 4-2-0 record. The Eagles secured a 1-0 win over Denton Braswell last Friday in a 2-2 tie on Saturday with McKenney Boyd. The Eagles tied again with Allen 1-1 earlier this week. The Eagles will go head-to-head -head with McKenney at Children's Health Stadium tonight at 7.30. Despite adversity, the drive and commitment of student athletes hasn't wavered. Alyssa Ventura reveals how the Varsity Girls Soccer Team plans to continue their winning streak throughout the season. The Girls Varsity Soccer Team has started the 2023 soccer season strong. They're currently undefeated, rising in district rankings and hoping to go all the way to state. Their dream of winning state champs last year was lost when they fell in the first round of playoffs after being number one in district. 
Last year, I feel like as a team as a whole, we kind of just like met the expectations that were set for us. So we came into practice and just did what was expected. This year, it's just like a goal for us too, especially coming in the districts now to just go above and beyond the expectations set for us and just continue the push. Despite the disappointing loss of last year's first playoff game, the Lady Eagles are determined to bounce back. Many girls are returning players, and for them, having experienced loss at such a high point can be turned into an asset. This year especially, we've already um, had a lot of adversity in preseason. Last year, going into districts, we didn't tie or uh, lose any games, and this year we've uh, tied games and faced teams that were actually difficult for us to play against. So I think that's really important going into districts, that we've already faced the adversity going in and not having to meet it when we get there. Taylor Baca has coached girls soccer at PHS for the last five years and is confident that the talent and teamwork of the 2023 team can take them even farther this season. You know, I think we've been really successful over the last few years. Uh, obviously, as a coaching staff, we're always looking to do things better. Mm -hmm. This year in particular was just making sure that the group was ready as a collective. We had a lot of returners this year, which was great. The kids already kind of understand how we play, the system. So for us, it was just building on what we've been doing in the past. The Lady Eagles have been a force to be reckoned with so far this season, shutting out six of their opponents. They only intend to keep improving and have their eyes set on a state title. I'm Alyssa Ventura, reporting for Eagle Nation News. The Lady Eagles are 11-0-3 so far this season, making them first in district and third in the state. Yeah, and I also saw that they were one of the top 20 teams in the country, which is just awesome. And Landry, we have a sports-filled weekend this week with more Prosper Sports <laughs> and the Super Bowl. And the Mavs game tonight. <laughs> which I will definitely be tuning into. And that's all we have for you today, Eagle Nation. Once again, I'm Parker Reynolds. And I'm Landry Long. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day, and go Eagles!